my goodness. That blew my mind. I didn't know about that. Hello brains. So I love brain hacks. I love anything that helps us try different, do things in a little bit of a different way that works with our brains, not against it. There are a lot of people making TikToks about brain hacks, so I wanted to check some out and react to them. By the way, this episode is sponsored by Babbel. It's the number one language learning app in the world. And right now, you can get it for 65% off. I love the app personally. Stick around till the end of the video to learn more about it. I'm seeing these for the first time. So I played fetch with myself today. Let me explain. <laughs> Executive dysfunction and task initiation are the bane of my existence. A lot of the time, the hardest step to starting a task is just getting up. Get one of these timers. They're loud and obnoxious. Set the timer for however long you're going to allow yourself to soak in the inertia. Then you're going to start it. And then you're going to chuck it across the room. Slide <laughs> it. Yeah. Throw it. Get it as far away from you as humanly possible. No, that's great. I set timers for myself all the time and I immediately turn them off because they annoy me. And sometimes I don't even realize I've done it. So yes, I love this. Set, put, putting across the room to where you have to get up and do the thing is great. I love this. Even better hack, put it next to the thing that you need to do. So now you've removed another barrier because you are already there. You haven't just gotten up, you've gone to the place where you need to be. So you may have already heard of the ADHD tax where you buy something, you yep. use it, it goes bad, and you have to throw it away, and it's wasted oh, money. Oh, the ADHD tax is so many things. Well, what about paying the ADHD tax up front at the grocery store? If you buy fresh broccoli, your executive dysfunction won't let you eat it because you'll have to wash it and cut uh -huh. it and everything. But if you buy yeah. pre-cut and pre-washed broccoli, even though it's a little more expensive, it'll be easier for you to use. <laughs> Except that I still won't use it. <laughs> I love this and it can be a little bit of a trap because I know this and I've told myself this and sometimes I get the pre-chopped broccoli and then it still goes bad. So <laughs> I do think that if you know yourself and you know that it's gonna work for you to spend a little bit more money to save more money in the long run, that's great. Otherwise, it's just a way to increase the ADHD tax. Know thyself. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna show you the most ADHD thing in my bedroom that has been an absolute lifesaver. This is my dress. Notice how I can't see anything that's in that. You can't see it, it doesn't exist in the ADHD oh, brain. Okay. So I have Hang on, I need to pause this for a second. Object permanence. So I see this coming, going around a lot on Twitter. I'm not sure who this originally came from, but object permanence is not what those of us with ADHD struggle with. The experience of things being out of sight, out of mind, of us forgetting about things that we can't see is totally real, which is one of the reasons I suggest if you're using a container, use a clear container or label that container because otherwise we will forget what's in it. But forgetting what's in it or forgetting about something isn't the same thing as lacking object permanence. Object permanence is something that we develop as babies. It's something we develop usually six to 12 months of age, definitely by the age of two, where we just have an understanding that if something is not within our line of sight, it still does exist. So I understand why people confuse the two, but they are different things. ADHD forgetfulness, out of sight, out of mind, is not the same thing as object permanence, and here's why. Because we still understand. We might forget to text our friend back because they haven't texted us in a while and we've you know, completely forgotten about it and then they reach out again and we're like, oh right, we have a friend. But we still have an understanding that even if we don't text our friend, they do exist. We're not just like, whoa, they popped back into existence. So I think that's a really important distinction to make. I wish we had a snappier term for it, but object permanence is not what we struggle with. We do have object permanence, we just forget. <laughs> it is a towel rod put on the wall. Okay, the tip though, the tip is really good. The great thing about these hooks is they can like lock so they can't come off. So when yeah, you I love that. Oh on, my goodness, that blew my mind. I didn't know about that. That's so cool. It's one of the most frustrating things for me is when hangers fall off the rods. I hate it. That blew my mind. That that tip blew my mind. So yes, please don't call it object permanence. But other than that, yes. Okay, I have ADHD and I have a hack that quite literally changed my life. I saw this thing on TikTok. I can't remember who did it. But basically what they said is when you go to put something down, don't put it down, put it away. Don't put it down, put it away. I hate this. Okay, I live in a townhome and there are two two flights of stairs. So if I didn't put anything down and I had to go immediately put it away, I don't like this. I'm not saying it wouldn't work, but I, I don't want, no, <laughs> like, no. <laughs> yeah, when you put one piece of clothing there, don't put it down, put it away. Ah! <laughs> I'm having like a really negative reaction to this. Because it's a tiny, like 10 second inconvenience now. Okay, hang on. It's a tiny 10 second inconvenience now. 
maybe. Or maybe when you go to put it away, you see something else that makes you remember that you need to do something else and now you're distracted and you're doing all these things. So I don't know, I I, I would very much like, you tell me what you think about this hack. Um, I don't love it personally. Again, it's not that it wouldn't work. I think that it would, it would make me neurotic. I already have anxiety and the idea that I can't put things down for a second, that I have to put them away right away, that would derail a lot of my routines. And I think that's something it's important to think about when we're looking for brain hacks is what do we already do and what do we do naturally? And have we gotten that to the point where it's mostly working for us? And if so, do we wanna do something that's gonna completely change how we operate? I also want to say like anybody who says do this like unequivocally, I would encourage you to offer options. Be like, this is something you can do or something that works for me. What is a good hack for you might not be what's appropriate for somebody else or it might not be a good time. You never know who you're talking to. If you're making content like this, you don't know who you're speaking to. You don't know what their life is like, what their particular needs are. And so framing it in, in terms of like, hey, here are strategies you can do as opposed to like, this is what you should do, I think is a lot healthier and recognizing that just because it works for you doesn't mean it's gonna work for somebody else. And even with the research-based stuff, just because the research says that it, it works for the vast majority of people, there's still gonna be outliers that it's not a good fit for. So just keeping that in mind. We all know that don't put it down, put it away. But sometimes I don't have enough energy for that. I break yes, it down thank my room. You. All of this stuff belongs in the bathroom. So I'm just gonna set it in there and worry about that later. This stuff belongs in my office, so I'm gonna do the same thing. Throw this guy in the kitchen, and very quickly, I have a cleaned off living room table, and I feel good. Yeah, I like that one a lot better. Um, th this is something that I find a little bit easier. Sometimes it takes me a lot of brain power to figure out exactly where something goes, but putting it in a general space is a lot easier. When I clean a room, usually what I do is, as I'm cleaning the room, anything that doesn't belong in that room, I stick by the door of that room so that when I leave that room, I pick it up to, to bring it out. You know, if I if while I'm cleaning a room, every time like I pick something up, I put it exactly where it belongs. That's a lot more tedious, and I, I'm a lot more likely to waste a lot of energy and get distracted and stuff. So. So this is a kind of a version of that and I do like that better. I like the acknowledgement that not everybody has the energy to go put something away all of the time. I like the tweaking of the strategy to work for them specifically. Okay, so here's a little ADHD hack or ADHD coaching tip, which I am sure I did not make up because nothing is new, everything is recycled. But I call it lightning in a bottle. So have you ever had an experience where you inadvertently get exposed to some stimuli like a YouTube video or a documentary okay. or something on social media um, and it puts you in the mood to do a thing? So like you're watching some documentary about the food industry and then you're like, oh man, I'm going <laughs> vegan and you go and just like throw out all the meat in your fridge and like commit to being vegan for like a you day. You don't know me. We all have hundreds of dollars worth of hobbies that we got inspired to do when we saw somebody else doing it and it looked cool, right? The thing is you can capture that moment of inspiration and put it in a bottle. Listening. What was the stimuli directly preceding you being in the mood to do that thing and how can you use that to help oh. you? I'm literally never in the mood to do my makeup or workout, but I follow a lot of fitness and makeup people on Instagram. So when I need to do one of those two things, my first thing isn't to go and just start doing it. It's to go on Instagram and look at those people and get in the mood to do it. And the next thing, it's easy. Yeah. I mean, things being easier when we're in the mood to do them. Again, 100%, like this is absolutely true. If our brains are engaged and we want to do a thing, it is so much easier. It's not just like, oh, well, yeah, everybody would love to be in the mood to do the thing. No, it's actually hard. It's like grinding gears when you're trying to do something that your brain does not want to do when you have ADHD. It takes so much longer. It's such a more painful experience. I love this. I love the lightning in the bottle thing because it's so often that I'm like, oh, well, I'm in the mood to do something like, and I got to ride the wave. But I really like this, like paying attention to what happened that got you in the mood. Sometimes it is random. I will say that. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know, like I looked at a picture of a swing set and for some reason I was like, let me organize my sock drawer. But if it was something related, I really like that. Like there are certain people I know that I talk to and then I'm more in the mood to do something because that's just what they remind me of or or it's what they're excited about. So now I'm excited about it or whatever. Love this hack. We're back with Hot Girl ADHD Hacks. <laughs> Hot Girl ADHD clothes. Hacks. First up is my laundry system. I keep dirty clothes in here. And for all the clothes that I've worn maybe once, but I'm not ready to put in the laundry basket yet, I put in this basket. And this is like pajamas or sweatshirts that I like to get a couple wears out okay, of. Okay, I, I wanna pause. I really like that idea. I, I have a spot for that too. It's the top of my dresser. 
the reason I do it that way is because I tried this actually. I tried having a separate hamper for clothes that I'm not, that don't need to be washed yet, but you know, a sweatshirt or whatever. But I got confused and like I kept using the wrong the hamper for the wrong thing and it actually didn't end up working for me because of that. It was just too much cognitive processing. So now I just like anything that I'm like, oh, I can wear this again. I put on top of my dresser. I have to see everything. If I don't see it, it just mm -hmm. doesn't exist. It's gone, vanished. I can actually help with this one. Take the doors off. Take them off. Your cupboards don't need doors. <laughs> just take them off. Your cupboards don't Everything need doors. Everything exists now, always. Take them off. <laughs> What I love about this one is it's just like, why do we do things this way if it's not helpful to us? Why do your cabinets need doors? Um, is that helpful? I, I think it's good to every once in a while challenge it and be like, okay, so we've been doing this this way for as long as we can remember. You know, my, my, my parents had covered doors and their parents had covered doors and their parents' parents had covered doors, but like, why? And, and do we still need them? I think it's a good question to ask just because things are done that way doesn't mean they need to be or even that it's what's best for us you want to hear a life hack yeah of course you do i call this life hack Always. organized chaos <laughs> my grandmother actually taught me this when i'm listening here's the situation you've got guests showing up unexpectedly in 10 minutes and your sink is full of dishes you have random pieces of paper all over the house are you ready for the hack organize it all I, I know it sounds stupid, but hear me out. Instead of washing the dishes in your sink, organize them in the sink. Like that, crop all over the counter, just put it in a nice pile. See? Okay. It looks organized. Again. I'm pause it for a second. I thought she was going to suggest filing it and I was like, no, this is not scientific. Don't quote me on that. But I have like two brain, two, two versions of my brain. I have, I have the, oh crap, something's about to happen. Like do it all quickly. And then the, like, I can think well enough to do it and think through my, my life choices. My organizing brain is not the same as my panic, get it done brain is what I'm saying. Like I, when, when that fight or flight kicks in, which is essentially what's happening when somebody's gonna be there in 10 minutes, I'm not gonna be thinking through things well enough to organize them. But if all you're saying is like, just stick it in a pile, you're, you're asking me to make a pile out of it, I can do piles. I can do piles. Have you ever used sour candy to stop panic attacks? This is such a helpful technique, but why does it work? Eating something sour can trigger saliva production. Which yeah, even thinking about eating something sour. To fight or flight. The act of swallowing activates our vagus nerve, which activates our parasympathetic nervous system that's responsible for relaxation. That's an interesting trick. I would be willing to try that. We have a video about, um, it's called Tips Tips. It's tip skills. There, there, there are things that you can do to interrupt anxiety or panic attacks. Yeah, that do put our bodies into, um, you know, it activates our parasympathetic nervous system. So that flips the switch from sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight to like parasympathetic nervous system, which is like rest, relax, digest. Um, and that can lower anxiety and interrupt panic attacks. So I think theoretically this would work. I don't see why it wouldn't. Um, a lot of times it's, it's, whatever you can do to bring yourself back to the present and sour candy should theoretically do that. I like this tip. That said, there is a range of, you know, where you're at in terms of like levels of anxiety and where you're at in the, in the panic attack. And sometimes things that would work early on aren't going to work a little bit later. Sometimes you have to write it out. It's different for everybody. Just full disclaimer there, but I don't see why it wouldn't be worth trying. Let's see if it works for you. So this was great. I think it's really cool that there are so many people talking about ADHD and giving brain hacks. TikTok wasn't even a thing when I started and a lot of this stuff I had to dig up in like research papers to understand things about ADHD. And I put out what I could on the channel, but like it's just really exciting seeing so many people talking so openly about ADHD because yeah, when I started this, this wasn't happening yet. I can't wait to see more. Really all I ask is that if you're educating on ADHD, please check your sources. If you're gonna repeat something, make sure you know either where it came from or verify that the information is accurate or speak to your personal experience because there is a lot of bad info out there and I don't want us to be repeating it and spreading misinformation because a lot of times misinformation is worse than no information. You know, there's nothing wrong with a hack that like works for you, doesn't work for somebody else, cool. But telling anybody that this is what they should do, you know, telling them about a term that you haven't looked up to make sure that that's what it means. Let's be careful with that. Our community is struggling, they need the support. It's great that we're out there giving it, but it's also important that we are doing it in a way that's gonna be helpful for people.
So I took Italian courses in college because I thought it was a beautiful language. And a few years later, I dated a guy from Italy long distance and I got pretty good at speaking it. But because I never actually lived in Italy, I missed out on a lot of vocabulary. A lot of what we talked about was just whatever would come up naturally in a long distance conversation. And it's been over a decade since then and a lot of what I did learn, I've forgotten. But I did fall in love with Italy and I wanna go back to Italy next year. So I decided to brush up on my Italian and see if I could get good enough at it again that I could speak Italian while I was there. I've tried a few different apps, but this time I decided to use Babbel because it is an app, which is convenient, but the lessons are designed by real language teachers. A lot of the lessons reminded me of what I learned in school, but it's way more fun and in 10 minute chunks. And it teaches real world practical conversations in all kinds of different scenarios, not just falling in love. I'm impressed with how quickly I'm learning and how practical the lessons are. A lot of it's put in context, which is really nice. It's been like a few days and I'm already confident ordering breakfast and asking for the check. I'm excited to be able to travel and actually speak the language. If you'd like to try it out, you can get 65% off your subscription. Just click the link below. Thank you to my brain advocates and all my Patreon brains for allowing me to make all kinds of content, including reacting to other people's content. Again, this is so cool. I literally could not do React videos on ADHD content when I started because there wasn't ADHD content out there to react to. So even the fact that I can do this is super exciting to me. Like, subscribe, click all the things, and I will see you next video. Bye, brains.